Welcome back to another video. Another journey into the bike vault. This week I have a Rally m 700. You know, one of those titanium chromo combils built by the special division or special branch. This one was just going to be a donor bike for the 753. Harvest some parts and be done with it. But I couldn't bring myself to do it. This bike is so clean. The M560 LX crankset is, was pristine with smooth shifting shifters and some awesome cantilever brakes. It was great right out of the box. That was until I tried to remove the crankset and the extractor threads tore out instantly. I tried several ways but ended up just cutting off that crank. And now, well, it's time for the build. So sit back, grab a rum and coke, and enjoy. For once, the supervisor is back on duty. Now that's a little better, but it's mainly the lens flare. Anyway, part spikes. Yeah, this one, this beautiful condition, Rally Dynatech, I picked up actually for a part spike. Um, sometimes it's a cheap way to get parts. In fact, a lot of the time it's a cheap way to get parts, but this one I was really struggling to bring myself to break apart. That has been helped by that button bracket, or that crank arm, should I say. The driver's side crank arm, I tried to get off, um, fully wound in the tool, and um, yeah, it just popped the threads right out. There was barely any resistance to them, they just came straight out. They looked okay, whether someone had tried to get them off before, I don't know, but yeah. I tried various methods, um, I tried heating them up to try and loosen the bond and then use whatever threads were remaining to get it off, didn't work, sprayed them down, didn't work, uh, tried the gear puller method, didn't work, so I ended up just doing a marrow man and um, cutting it off, yeah, so that's cut off now and seeing as that's happened I'm thinking I might as well turn this bike into something a bit different. I have no idea this is going to come off. Hell yeah. Nice, that's been recently greased. Someone has taken this apart before.
Okay. Yeah, that's been greased as well. Hey Tov. They are packed. Now instead of XT, we've got SLX this time, a little bit cheaper, um, and this is going to be sort of a commuter spec anyway, so it should work. Nice 10 speed SLX derailleur. Fresh grease. Should be right. You asking for food? Eh? <laughs> you asking for attention? Well, these aren't the original wheels, obviously. Whoops. I'm saving those. I'm stealing those for the um, 753 if you want to swatch that after I don't know actually when these are going to be out but I do need to tidy these up a lot yes I know Torv I wonder if we can just do a weird transition like spin the wheel and like easy as that So this hub is going to be a little bit different, it's not just going to be a strip down a service, I need to change this freewheel which um, it's a little bit dry, but <laughs> hey Dov, hey, I've got a 8 speed one, or 8 to 11, 12 speed um, to go on, so it can come off 
need to work out how much uh, spacing to take off the drive side because obviously the new hub is going to be a little the free hub is going to be a little bit taller. So we've got this to come off. Um, you can obviously do it just by, well, by taking the spacing out the non-drive side. Then you've got to try and uh, change the dishing of the rim. And if it's an old rim, then it can be a little bit difficult because, you know, C spokes. So this is just an easy way to do it. Again, and with that off, <laughs> should be a 10 mil uh, Allen key to go in the middle, which might be a bit tight. There we go. Okay, so these are the two free wheels. Um, seven speed, or up to, up to seven speed, with the obviously Uniglide and Hyperglide. This one is eight speed plus. You can see it's ever so slightly taller. I think when I did this before, there was only about two mil difference in height. Um, but why I did that, because I want to compare where the bearing surfaces are going to sit inside. So, Right, first what I did, I had the original bolt in there, yeah, you can see that, and I just took a measurement with that sitting flush and the bolt sits on the, on the bottom of the bearing surface so if I can get roughly the same uh, at the end of it by removing some spaces from the drive side the wheel should be centered. So what I'm looking at about 13 and a half mil for that. Pop that out. That's the new one. Drop the old one in. And the distance there is 11 and a half mil so in theory in theory the bearing surface of this new one is two mil lower is that right no two mil higher sorry two mil higher than this one so if i take out two mil of the uh spacers on the axle, then this should sit flush um, and not need any spacing, in theory. There'll be less clearance between the lock ring and the frame. Um, it worked for me before, but yeah, it should work. So I've got to clean everything up and um, crush fingers. Yeah, on the last one I did, this one wasn't joined, so I could just take out those. Hmm. So these together, 15.6. This one on its own, 13.6. I think that might work. So now in theory, in theory, that goes on there,
seven. So this newly spaced axle should go through. And that in theory should then, once put the tire on properly, sit square in the frame. Okay, first check is the uh, how square does it sit? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> the wheel set there picked up this 130 mil, not 135. So I need to buy another two mil on each side anyway. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, need to undo these. Okay, so I've added in three mother washers on this side. Two mirror washers on the other side. Change the axle out for well, obviously a bit longer, 145 mil in total, which gives 135 mil OLD overlock dimension diameter. It's not really a diameter. All this free hub. Have any issues with the lock ring on this? I doubt it. I think it was just the hope one I had before. There we go. And that is why we switch out the free hub. the uh, balancing point. Uh, 
Okay. So that's it for another build. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something along the way. Unfortunately, this bike is a little bit too small for me and I'm no giant. So it's up for sale for those under 5.9ish. I love the tires on this bike. The Michelin Wild Runners roll so well and the 42 tooth ring up front help keeps the speed up and the 42 cassette on the rear helps you climb. It's perfect. It will make a great about town rig, stick a rack on the back and your way away you go. And that's the end. Don't forget to check the description below for all the bike specs and hit that big red button that says subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next one.